Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be covering Anthony Palumbo. Now, I am going to give you a recap on some of Anthony's best moments in a minute, but I want to let you know right now, this is something I'm really going to need the community's help on because I found some things, but I wasn't able to find too much on Anthony's past or present. So this is something I need the TCAP community to come together on. You can comment on my blog where I have the article published. You can let me know in the comments uh, if you can provide verifiable sources of information. But I really want to develop up a good blog post for you guys on who Anthony Palumbo is, who he was, and everything in between. Oh, and if he looks a little different in this picture than the video, I ran this through my video editor. I use Capwing, and I ran this through the editor's AI filter on clearing up the image, and this is what it thinks he looks like with a clear image. So whether that's true or not, I don't know, but this is the AI filtered image. I want to be top. Oh, okay. You want to do it raw? Raw? Yes. What's that? No rubber. I'll relax. I'm just a little nervous. I know this too. Right. <laughs> My excuse to come here, I went to Atlantic City. I just I don't know. What, what Put that in the refrigerator. Why'd you need the cover story to go to uh, Atlantic City? I'll see my brother. Yeah. yeah, but who did you have to give that to as a cover story? No, um, my brother is home, my other brother. Right. And I said, to her, I got to go to Atlantic City. And, but instead, you came here. I stopped by to go there. So you like to gamble? Yeah, I love to gamble. You took a little bit of a gamble coming in here tonight. No, I just stopped by. Yeah, I know. I did a stupid thing. All right, guys. So this information was provided by Joey's TCAP channel, and he's awesome. He always has so much information. I don't know if he gives it on his phone or a Google Drive or something, but he has so much information. So whenever I need the insight on a predator, I just hit him up, and he gives me some of the stuff he has that I didn't even know was out there. But this is uh, one of the documents he gave me. It shows, hi, buddy, what's up? So this had to do with the original sting. And then you get to the other one that has uh, Richmond Criminal Court. And I believe that dealt with something traffic related, but I got to go back and check our text. I'll update the blog when I see it. By the way, if you are interested, I just announced uh, YouTube memberships. So I've added it in. I still have the Patreon and I appreciate all the patrons that are in there. That gives you access to all the data that I really don't want to put on YouTube, all the extra data on these cases. But I do have the YouTube memberships now. And whenever I upload a video, at least with most videos, that'll give you early access to the video. So I may put this video in tonight on the 17th and it'll be up tomorrow uh sometime on the 18th around like 5 or 6 p.m but the members will be able to see that video prior and i do appreciate anyone that joins and supports the channel that way as well okay so with investigations sometimes you have to look at the relatives now i don't like publishing their information here i just have some names on my blog but not the addresses or really any information about them uh, because as far as i'm concerned they didn't do anything wrong they shouldn't be their information shouldn't be featured where they work where they live anything like that um, maybe if it's directly related to him but this is just indirect information but we do need to gather up some of that indirect information to try to search him out especially with someone like anthony palumbo when there's not a lot of information on him so what i did was a criminal name search with new york state unified court system and on, the thing with new york too there's a lot of public records with new york that can lead to information but it's really hard to get information, especially with the court system. It's hard to get a lot of the case files. Uh, it's hard to do searches in New York. With FOIA, it's actually FOIL in New York, but it's very difficult to get information on your average individual person that's not like a government worker or anything like that. So New York is really a pain in the ass, so we have to resort to some of these other techniques. But I searched the names and I didn't find a thing, unfortunately. For a moment, I almost thought I got lucky. I did a Supreme Court search. With New York, I found Anthony Palumbo Sr., but as I did some checking on the summons and complaint and other information, it turned out not to be him. It is crazy to me how many Anthony Palumbos there are just in the state of New York. I thought that would be kind of a unique name. It is not. So I didn't have much luck with the New York case system lookup feature, but I figured I'd try Pacer. Pacer is my one-stop shop for almost every investigation I do, that's public access to court electronic records. If you're just doing a few searches here and there, it's only 10 cents a search or page. So it's not that expensive, except when you start uh, buying multiple pages up and 
full dockets up or complaints, then you could be spending $3 each one and that can add up very quickly. So I did a search for any bankruptcies and I didn't find anything because again, it's likely that he has family money. I did a federal criminal search with Pacer and there were a few results, but it was fairly unlikely. Same thing with federal court records uh, for the civil searches. There was some same name results. It was unlikely, but not impossible that he was in there. The problem is that I can search by middle initial, even though there are other people with his uh, middle initial, that's not him. And there were some names that came up that was just Anthony Palumbo and no uh, no other information. So I'd actually have to buy the complaint or buy some of the different court records within that docket or within that specific case to try to determine if it was him. And with all the same names that are out there, I figured I'd probably be spending at least $50 to $100 just to try to determine that if it might be him or not, and it may not be, and I would have just wasted the money. So I didn't really want to do that. But let's move on to something a little more exciting. This says, hubby in pitchfork threat. Brandishing a pitchfork, an 85-year-old Staten Island man threatened to kill his wife in a dispute over $1 million in stocks, please say. Frank Palumbo was arraigned yesterday on assault and weapons possession charge. And this is, by the way, this is back in 2005. But in the Monday attack on his wife, Mary 75, inside their shot well, house address. And that is a, I won't give the exact street address, but that is an address that I definitely found associated with him, as well as Frank and Mary being his parents. Now you can see in the article, uh, Frank Palumbo basically took a wooden tray and smashed it against his wife's face, hitting her nose, and then menaced her with a pitchfork. Now I looked up the area and I didn't see any farms around this area. So not sure why he would have a pitchfork. Maybe it was a family heirloom from like, I mean, it's kind of a weird family heirloom, but of uh, maybe past family that worked on a farm or something. I don't know. But I guess the wife is, was okay. Uh, but he then took hot soup and or boiling soup and poured it over his son's head. Now, I do want to point out that the age doesn't really match up with 2005. It's off. However, the address matches up, the name matches up, the parents match up. So unless he has another brother that's of a different age named Anthony Palumbo, which I don't believe he has a brother with that same name, then I think the paper just, this is the New York Post, so I think they just screwed up on the name. Either way, I'm pretty sure that's him, and that's crazy, and it's unfortunate. No excuses for what Anthony did, but it's unfortunate that he had such an abusive father. Finally, I checked out New York City Department of Finance, found that his brother, or at least we're assuming his brother, Richard Palumbo, uh, owns the property on Shotwell Ave. I took out the number there on the screen, but everything's in the blog. Now, I believe Anthony Palumbo is still associated with the address. He might be elsewhere. There was another address in True People Search that was more recent, but you know, you never know with the dates on True People Search. So uh, he's probably still associated with that address and maybe just living off family money. The thing is, at the end of the day, we don't know. There's not a lot on him. I, I did a breach search. There's not really any sort of digital footprint, even with the old Yahoo email. So that's why I'm asking the TCAP community for more information, especially verified information, so I can update the blog and we can find out what's going on with this guy. All right, we'll leave it at that. I appreciate you watching the video and I'll see you guys on the next one.